yeah, back in the AFC East again. Buffalo Bills travelling to the Miami Dolphins. This was billed as quite as a massive match in a lot of people's eyes between the two top two teams in the AFC East. Of course, I would dispute that because I believe that New England will get into that top two one way or another. But of course, Miami fans very confident after their edgy win in Foxborough, but deserved in the end. And Buffalo, who were brilliant last season, getting all the way to the AFC Championship, but with their rocky start against Pittsburgh, which no one predicted. So we were all expecting another tight game. But wow, what a disaster it was for the Miami Dolphins as the Buffalo Bills run away with a 35-0 to win. I just couldn't believe how Miami uh, what was. The, the game just uh, wasn't close. I mean, the tour injury didn't help them early doors. I get that. But the performance of that offensive line, I think even with Pat, Pete Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady wouldn't have been able to cope with the Buffalo pressure. That is a, it doesn't excuse some of the throwing that backup quarterback Jacoby Brissett did because he called, got intercepted as well. And there just weren't great throws. He's a reason why he's been a bit of a journeyman back, back up at the likes of New England and in, in the now, of course, Miami. But even so, I don't care who you are, you, you, you don't get shot out like that. That is r- really uh, poor. And it, as I say, it was about four, four or five turnovers in the end for Miami Dolphins. Buffalo were just simply efficient. They didn't have to do anything amazing. I think Stefan Diggs has got four receptions for 60 yards and score. Uh, and the, probably the player of the game, amazingly, goes to show how bad Miami were. Even the defence struggled. It was Devin Singletary that had the game of the day with He's 16 rushing yards for about 82 yards, I believe. Got a touchdown as well, and it was a good score at that. So this is a game I thought they would have lots of talking points, barring the two injury. But you wouldn't believe that it, these two teams are playoff contenders close to each other, where one of them runs away with a 35 to nothing win. As I say, positive signs for Buffalo that they bounce back like that after the Pittsburgh defeat. But from a Miami point of view, you think, are they still living off that win in Foxborough, which was only their second one since 2008? Or is, is, was this just a one-off bad day and they'll just bounce back in week three? How, 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 do you, how did you see this, Brad? Um, yeah, obviously, as you said, the tour injury don't help. Um, but I just think, I think I think Buffalo, they had the week one against the Steelers. It was a slip for them. I think I think they'll go on a solid sort of run now. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was just easy, wasn't it? Like, Mm. Me, me being an absolute clown left Singletary on my bench on fantasy um, <laughs> and, and and started Kamara ahead of him. Um, I think... Well, Nobody that be a solid choice. I mean, we, we we played each other, Adam. I think there was only 10 points in it in the end, thanks to uh, Aaron Jones, who we'll get on to later. But yeah, it was just, it was just, it was just easy for the Bills. Um, I think, yeah, I've, it's just one of them where I think they've just bounced back from a week one slip. Um they, we all know we all know their strengths. Josh Allen, very good quarterback. Diggs, wide receiver. Singletary, when he gets his running game going, we we know their strengths. And I think the Dolphins, depending on the tour injury, um, I think I think they'll they'll have a slippery slope now, um, depending on obviously Tua's length of injury. Yeah, it, it, it is a, it's a concern, and I think they've got to get a system going. So it's one of them. Even with the quarterback injury, we've seen quite a few of them in. Week two, and it's very on in the, early on in the season, but the intensity of the games are going to be much more this season with the crowds back. So although last season was a fully competitive season with some reduced crowds here and there, it's just not the same now. Full stadiums, defences are more fired up. So there's, there's going to be injuries where O-lines won't be able to hear the play calling from the uh, quarterback, and that's where you let linebackers through the net and at the quarterback. And I think that's what's caused a lot of these injury. But Miami, whether it's a run game, whether it's just getting uh, Jacoby Brissett quick re- receptions in the slot, they've got to get something going. They can't just, they can't do what, what West Ham do at Tottenham Hotspur in English football terms and just turn up for that game and that's it. They've got, they can't just turn up for New England and think that season done. This is an extra, this is an extra long season. It, but like after New England, there, there were 16 regular season games going. You perform like that against Buffalo. I think it's very worrying. And, it, and you have to say it was the worst performance of the week by a country mile. So big job for Miami, who I believe travelled to Derek Carr's Las Vegas Raiders next week. So we'll be, of course, coming on to the, the Raiders as well. But 
big, big concern for Miami. And they can't go on too bad a run because New England and Buffalo will run away with the yeah. top two AFC spots. I think we can already uh, say that Jets have secured that bottom stop spot even after two weeks. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> so his next 